Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Very significant gaps remain in reaching Canada-EU free trade deal. EU watchdog still eyes 2016 start for insurance rules. Laws, regulations and administrative provisions relating to undertakings for collective investments. Leaving the EU will offer Britain new opportunities, Sajid Javid says. Plus, what is the UK pink book? And also, an incredible global scandal revealed in our video library. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Prime Minister Stephen Hager says very significant gaps remain in Canada-EU free trade negotiations, signalling that the already overdue trade pact won't be completed anytime soon. While the trade talks appear stalled, the broader G20 announced a series of economic measures meant to spur the sluggish global economy, including promising to avoid new protectionist trade policies and automatically sharing tax information to combat international tax evasion. The Canada-EU Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, CETA, would be the biggest trade deal in Canadian history, but Harper said it must be done in a way that serves the interests of the provinces and the broader Canadian economy. New risk capital rules for Europe's insurance sector could still take effect in 2016. Although the timetable for getting them finalised is tight, the head of the EU insurance supervisor, EIOPA, said on Friday. Gabriel Bernardino also said the British Prudential Regulation Authority plans to use early warning indicators to check the accuracy of the complex mathematical models that insurance companies use to monitor their risks and capital, and that these would be rolled out across Europe. Larger insurers expect to use complex tailor-made mathematical models to demonstrate those risks in dealing with regulators, which they hope will give them an advantage. Bernardino said, at some point in time, we will come out with some indicators to be used on a European level. This is a complicated article, but the essence of the regulation is driving at an EU-wide regulation in the financial services sector. The In the Pipeline section of our website has new regulations with regard to collective investments. This article covers the amendments that the Council has proposed in regard to the main regulatory document. Now, it concerns bonus caps, deferment periods, disclosure rules, remuneration committees and management company fees, amongst others. Certainly, the main regulatory proposal is one to watch, and I will keep you posted with more news as soon as our researcher John turns it out. Quitting the European Union will offer new opportunities that Britons should embrace, according to a Treasury Minister. Sajid Javid, the Economic Secretary to the Treasury, said that he was not afraid of leaving the EU if people voted for it in a referendum. The Conservatives and Liberal Democrats have pledged to hold an in-out vote if either remain in power after the 2015 general election. Mr Javid said that British business should not be worried about the UK leaving Europe. Now, personally, I agree with Mr Javid. Britain is missing a huge opportunity. Let me explain. Take our earlier story about the EU-Canadian free trade deal, currently stalled, and the US deal also moving slowly. And why? Well, because the huge institutions of the EU cannot get its ducks in a row. This is similar to small business and large corporates. The corporates are powerful but slow and inflexible, whereas small businesses are much more dynamic. The UK would benefit enormously by dropping out of the EU and pushing hard investment into the DTI, Department for Trade and Industry, so that it can develop independent trade arrangements with Africa, South America, Asia and, of course, the Commonwealth. Well, Chairman Cameron shouldn't be fannying around in Brussels, where he's neither liked nor respected, and Billy Haig should be out across the globe negotiating respectable trade, not talking cobblers about Assad's chemical weapons and trying to take us into another war that we certainly can't afford and we probably can't win. Friends, I urge you, get a letter or an email out to your MP and ask them, 
What are you doing personally to persuade the government that Britain should be an independent global trading nation? Send in your replies. I'd love to cover them in the show. The publication of the latest Pink Book has caused a stir in the Eurosceptic blogosphere. What, you might ask, is the Pink Book? The Pink Book is the official annual publication on the UK's balance of payments. It usually comes out mid-year and relates to the previous year. It has much more detail than other official publications on external payments, such as the monthly trade figures, and crucially, it has a page on the costs to the UK of its official transactions with the EU. The 2013 edition of the Pink Book shows that what it terms the UK's net contribution to the EU has more than trebled compared with a decade ago. It reached £9.5 billion in 2012, compared with £2.9 billion in 2002. Hat tip to Tim Comden for this article. Tim goes on to argue that even with the increases mentioned in the Pink Book, he believes that it is still not the whole cost of Britain's membership of the EU. Today in our video library, friends, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe this video is going to blow your hat off. I have been looking for a good solid piece of corroborated evidence for the fluffing out of European banks by the Federal Reserve in an effort to prop up the failing bankrupt Eurozone, which in turn was done in an effort to stem the pace of the US economic collapse. On record from Ben Bernanke's Fed report and questions in Congress, Mr Bernanke indeed stated that the Federal Reserve had passed funds in the order of trillions to European banks. On February 16th, 2012, Lord James of Blackheath, member of Britain's House of Lords, presented evidence he has discovered of an illegal scheme begun in 2009. His documents, including originals signed by Alan Greenspan and Timothy Geithner, show the illegal, off-the-books transfer by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York of $15 trillion to initially HSBC in London and then to the Royal Bank of Scotland. The Royal Bank of Scotland, under Royal Charter, is restricted from involvement in any such transactions. And so it simply gave the money to 20 European banks to use in a highly profitable scheme of co-trading. Fresh-cut MTNs, mid-term notes, generating trillions of dollars in profits over three years, none of which is shown on the books, none of which has been taxed or has benefited shareholders in these banks. As Blackheath outlines, the deception and cover for this transfer is the imaginary seizure of 750,000 tonnes of gold by agents of an unspoken entity. Now listen carefully at the end of the video and you'll hear one of the members of the House say, bloody hell. In essence, folks, we are talking about a multi-trillion dollar injection into the European banking system of fraudulent money by the US Federal Reserve that simply does not exist. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.